So how should you structure your engineering group to actually execute your AI vision and journey? Uh, I'm John Rose with Dell Technologies, and that's what we're going to talk about today. What we know is that AI projects in an enterprise, even if you're using off-the-shelf tools, which are more and more available, always require some level of technical effort. There is no concept of an AI outcome for an enterprise that's standardized turnkey and requires zero effort. It's always your data, your process, your people, your company, your product. So eventually you have to do some work. And that work in many cases results in technical work, people that have to potentially write code or build something or implement something. And we, we describe that as the engineering effort. And the good news is over the last several years, we've gone from everything being do-it-yourself projects to more and more off-the-shelf frameworks, turnkey components, standardized archetypes, think repeatable patterns, AI factories. And so you do a lot less of the work. But again, at some point in your AI journey, as you're trying to move things out of idea into production, there is some engineering effort. There's the act of creating and delivering the technology outcome that you're interested in. Now, the challenge is that was not a skill that was required two years ago, but it is a skill that every enterprise in the world is going to need as we look forward. And so there's this concept of AI engineering. What should the technical organization look like and how do you actually create it and build it out to have that capability to get things into production? So let's start with the composition of it. What we realized is, yep, data scientists were super important, but we needed to complement them with a, a modern software development capability. At Dell, we chose to use paired programming environments. We have software pairs that work in a modern, extreme, agile way, and their job is to write great code. So you have data scientists that can develop the data frameworks and understand the algorithms. You have now software developers that are on the same team that can actually turn that into actual software that can be, can be delivered. But we also needed technical product managers. I'm a big fan of the kind of agile methodologies that the actual quarterback is not the developer or the data scientist, it's a TPM. And the TPM manages the backlog, they manage the program. And if you have them embedded, you get there. And then the fourth component that we realized was necessary was someone on that team had to be extremely knowledgeable about the actual AI tools and frameworks. Well, let's call that an AI engineer. And so this composition of a, of a, a, a data scientist, a uh, set of paired, uh, paired programming, software developers, a TPM to orchestrate it, and some AI engineering capability. And when you put those all together into an atomic unit, we call that an AI pod, that is a sufficient architecture to take an AI idea and to turn it into an outcome. Now, part A is you, you're going to have to define what your AI pod structure is. We like these ideas of self-contained pods that you can hand work to, and they're repeatable, and they're standardized. Uh, we also realize that you know if you have those skills working together, largely you get a very complete answer and a full set of capabilities to deliver these outcomes. The next question, though, is you don't have all of those skills today. How do you get them? And there's always two paths to build skills in an organization. One path is uh, you can go hire them. The problem is, while I can probably hire data scientists. I probably can't hire a lot of AI engineers, and I might not even be able to hire enough software developers that know how to do modern agile software development, and I might not even be able to find as many TPMs as I would like. These are scarce skills. These are important. They're useful not just for AI. They're useful for almost all software development and all analytics frameworks. And so, you know, you could go and try to hire them, and you probably will, and it is important to have an anchor. It's, you know, if you don't have any well, go find a few of them. So you have somebody who understands these core skills. Maybe your first pod is one that you actually have to hire people for. But the technique that we're using, we've used it several times at Dell over the last decade, is that sometimes when a new approach materializes, instead of believing that you're going to have to bring all new people in to accomplish that outcome, what if you build your own? What if you train your own people? What if you move your skills forward? And, and we actually did this years ago with uh, cloud native software development. You know, we, we had this new way of writing software, microservices, uh, service meshes, Kubernetes and container management. Software developers didn't know how to do that. And so what we realized, you could create a dojo, a team of people who knew how to do cloud native development, but what you used it for wasn't just to develop code, you would actually take a bunch of high potential people who didn't know how to do that, but had the potential to do that, and you would pair them with that dojo. They would come in and work on the same project with a team that really knew how to do it. And after you did a few of those pairing exercises where a combined team of, let's call it, new people and highly experienced people worked on the same team using the modern methodology to get to an outcome, that set of new people weren't new people anymore. 
and they could become their own dojo. We are doing exactly the same thing for AI. We have a core set of AI pods. Some of them are people that have been here a long time, understand this expertise. We've organized them into that structure of data scientists, advanced software developers, TPM, and AI engineering. And we are now structured in which we are finding high potential people in parts of our organization, and we are pairing on projects together. And as they learn the tools, the methodology, as they develop the skill sets, we can then effectively bifurcate that, that pod and create two pods from it. Now, the advantage of doing it this way, and this is our bias, is one, it allows us to develop from within. We don't have to go hire people into the company to do all of this work. We can create our own talent, which is a very useful tool. It's probably the easier path and it takes a little longer, but it's definitely the, the right way to scale. But the other is that each of these pods, because they were essentially created within a pod that already existed, become very standardized. They're using the same tools. They have the same methodology. And so what's building out is not a set of silos of AI capability, but a collective of compatible engineering pods that can actually work on independent projects. Or more importantly, if I have a lot of work that needs to be done in some part of my organization at one moment in time, I can reapply these pods because they are all compatible with each other. They were built in the same way. They use the same tools, the same methodologies. Now, there are probably other approaches to building out your AI engineering capability, but the two things to take away from this conversation are, one, you have to define what that is. And I will tell you, it's not sufficient to assume that a data science team by themselves is an AI pod. You will need software development, you will need proper structure with the TPM, and you will need an AI expert in that, in that organization. And if you put them all together, generally speaking, you have a sufficient capability to do AI work, whether it's using off-the-shelf tools or building your own stuff. But then the second takeaway from this is, okay, great, I'm, how do I actually create them? And I will tell you, if you have nothing, you will have to hire some people. You will have to build the anchor, and you can find a few people. But once you have them, you should realize that it's also an easier path for you to create some model in which you can actually transfer people with high potential to learn these new skills and create kind of replicas of that those AI pods that you have. That will just be the more efficient path because there simply aren't enough people in the market to hire off the shelf people to come into your organization to do all this work. And so that combination of having an anchor and then having a model in which you can replicate and share that knowledge and create more and more of those archetypes, those pods across your organization, ultimately achieves a better outcome. Now, the reason why this is important at the end of the day, though, is look, there is no future any of us can foresee where we do not do more AI work inside of our organizations. Even if we have more off-the-shelf tools, there is still AI work that has to be done at a technical level. Every time we apply AI to a new process, we apply it to a different part of our organization, we create all of the new ROI that we're starting to see, there is technical effort underneath it. And so the sooner you define what your AI engineering structure looks like and how you're going to create it and scale it, the sooner you are prepared to deal with the inevitable growing need to actually do AI engineering work in your organization. So hopefully this was useful. There are probably other ways to do this. Feel free to send me comments if you have other ideas, but for Dell, this is how we're approaching it. Seems to be working. We've done it before. And honestly, I think everybody's going to discover that, you know, knowing how to properly define AI engineering structure and how to scale it are going to be two really important pieces of the enterprise journey.